Hi. In this video, I will discuss some applied problems that have been analyzed using prospect theory. The first involves taxi driver behavior on rainy days. Why can't you find a taxi on a rainy day? One possible explanation comes from Colin, Colin Camera and friends, 1997, who studied the labor supply of New York City taxi drivers. The taxi drivers rent a cab for a 12 hour period for a fixed fee plus petrol. Within the 12 hours, a driver can choose how long they keep the taxi out. For many reasons, such as weather, subway breakdowns, day of the week and conferences, a taxi driver's effective wage can vary. When they are busier, they have a higher effective wage. That is, they earn more fares. Cabra and friends found that in two of the three samples they examined, drivers drove less when their effective wages were higher. This was the case for inexperienced drivers in all three samples, and they drove significantly less than experienced drivers when wages were high. This contrasts with the basic prediction of economic theory that supply increases with price. Supply curves slope upwards. Camera and friends argue that this result is because taxi drivers have a daily earnings target beyond which they derive little additional utility. This leads them to work until they reach their target, which occurs more quickly on days with a higher wage. They argued that the drivers engage in narrow bracketing when they make decisions each day, isolating them as single decisions, how much should I work today, rather than thinking about them as a stream, how much should I work each day this week. Aversion to falling below the reference point is consistent with loss aversion, with the result below the reference point causing stronger feelings than a result a similar amount above the reference point. There have been numerous follow-up studies of taxi drivers. The results of these studies have varied. Faber, 2005, studied New York cab drivers and found that the decision to stop work was primarily a function of how many hours had been worked up to that point in the day. He identified the difference between his and camera and friends results as being due to different empirical methods and measurement problems with the camera and friends data. Faber, 2008, found that a labor supply model with reference dependent targets better fits than a standard neoclassical model. However, there was substantial variation day to day in any given driver's reference income level and most shifts ended before that reference income was reached. Faber 2015 used a much larger data set on New York taxi driver behavior and found that as standard economic theory would predict, taxi drivers drive more when they can earn more. Faber also found that drivers did not earn more when it was raining. Finally, Martin 2017 examined taxi driver labor supply using the S-shaped reference dependence of prospect theory. That is, Martin used the model with the reflection effect with risk-seeking behavior in the loss domain and risk aversion in the gain domain. Martin found evidence that taxi driver behavior was consistent with this full form of prospect theory. He differentiated from the other papers on the basis that they considered a narrower version of reference dependence, focusing on loss aversion only. The second example of prospect theory in action is the disposition effect. The disposition effect is the tendency for investors to sell stocks that are in the gain domain relative to the purchase price and to hold stocks that are in the loss domain. While tax implications or portfolio rebalancing are both potential explanations for asymmetric behavior relating to the sale of stocks, these factors are insufficient to explain the observed behavior. Most behavioral exp explanations have turned to prospect theory. For example, Sheffron and Statman, 1985, argued that the disposition effect is driven by the reflection effect, whereby investors are risk-seeking in the loss domain and risk-averse in the gain domain. To demonstrate how it works, they present the following scenario. Consider an investor who purchased a stock one month ago for $50 and who finds that the stock is now selling at $40. The investor must now decide whether to realize the loss or hold the stock for one more period. To simplify the discussion, assume there are no taxes or transaction costs. In addition, suppose that one of two equally probable outcomes will emerge during the coming period. Either the stock will increase in price by $10 or decrease in price by $10. 
According to prospect theory, our investor frames his choice as a choice between the following two lotteries. A, sell the stock now, thereby realizing what had been a $10 paper loss. B, hold the stock for one more period, given 50-50 given odds between losing an additional $10 or breaking even. For an investor who is risk-seeking in the loss domain, holding would be attractive. This figure illustrates that the certain loss of $10 from the reference point of $50 gives a lower value than holding for a chance of eliminating the loss. If we craft an alternative scenario where the stock is now selling at $60, selling would realize a $10 gain while holding the stock would be a risky prospect with the same expected value. An investor who is risk averse in the gain domain will sell. This figure illustrates that the certain gain of $10 from the reference point of $50 gives higher value than holding for a chance of a larger gain. The final example of prospect theory in action is and concerns the housing market. Genesovi and Mayer, 2001, examined housing data from Boston. They found that owners subject to nominal losses set higher asking prices with the increase in asking price being 25% to 35% of the difference between the expected selling price and their original purchase price. They also found that these owners attain higher prices, covering around 3% to 18% of that difference. This suggests sellers are averse to realizing nominal losses. However, note that the aversion leads to a better outcome.